everyone, it's Penny Black and Jill Foster here for a new PB&J card class. And in today's video, I'm going to be featuring different tips for mass producing unique cards. So ways to really get the most from your favorite products, make lots of cards that you can send and send smiles and hugs to your family and friends. But you can make a whole bunch and not get bored with the process. So you can be efficient with your time and your products, but not get bored and still be able to express your creativity. So here's just a look at a variety of just a few of the cards we're going to make. And we will go ahead and get started. So my first tip for mass producing unique cards is to limit your supplies by choosing one to three featured stamps or dies. So this is where I like to start when I just really want to get creative and make a bunch of cards. So the three products I, or the two actually that I'm starting with is our new creative die set petals which has tons of beautiful yet simple flowers and also our miniature stamp set posted and the cutout that goes with that posted cutout. Another tip is to work in batches whenever possible. So I've got my featured um, products picked out. You could pick from your stash or it could be something new that you've purchased or you could even try using these ones. And now I'm going to work in batches. So I'm going to just paint a whole bunch of paper. So I'm using Distress Ink reinkers used as watercolors. You do not have to paint to do this. You could pull out pattern papers. You could use just watercolors if you didn't want to use distress ink reinkers you could ink paper using an ink blending tool and a foam pad anything would work you just want to get lots of color down so I really enjoy the process of painting and what's great about this is that it's like no decision making non thinking painting <laughs> that I'm doing so I'm just going to paint right onto some Canson 140 pound cold press watercolor paper. I will have all of the colors, all of the supplies that I'm using in this video listed down in the YouTube description box below. And I am just painting, I'm mixing some other colors in. I'm not worried about if there are streaks in this because I'm going to be doing die cutting on this. So only little bits of this are going to show. So you can really have fun. This is a great way too if you have some new colors or some new um, paints that you want to try. Try them out like this. It's no pressure. If you don't like it, you haven't invested a lot of time. Or if it's like streaky, when you die cut it, it won't show anyways. Also a great way to try mixing different colors. If you add in two together on the paper while it's still wet, you can mix them right there on the paper. I'm also lifting some color here, so my brush, brush is pretty dry. You can see I pat it off on that paper towel and I can lift the color. So once I paint the papers, I also then will have some variation of some darks and lights within that same sort of color story. So a dark pink and a light pink, which comes in handy when you do create the cards later on or when you do your die cutting. So you'll see sometimes they'll have a dark side and a light side to the paper. But this is just really fun for me for painting. But again, like I said, you could use pattern papers, colored cardstock, whatever you love, whatever you have on hand. I have also cut my papers that I'm painting right now so that they're the same size of the platform, the cutting platform on my die cutting machine. That way when I lay out my dies and everything on here, it's just ready to go, ready to crank through in the die cutting machine. So whatever you use for your die cutting, that's a, just another little tip that I find really useful. Just pre-cut all those papers that you're going to use. So I hope you aren't getting bored with this, but I just wanted to show you just how simple and easy this is. If you've been wanting to watercolor or you like the look of watercolor but you are maybe feeling a little intimidated by it, this is a great way to do it. Use it with your die cuts. It doesn't always have to be a stamped image that you paint with but you can still get that relaxing benefit of painting. 
So also don't forget your neutrals. I did a little bit of tan and brown in there. That will come in useful as well when you go to create your cards later on. Now I'm doing a whole bunch of different colors, but if you also wanted to limit the number of colors that you do, you could do that as well. Just pick like three colors that you like for flowers and a couple of greens for leaves and stems and a couple of neutrals for backgrounds. You could also do that. There's no right or wrong. You can see there I'm just lifting some of that color to have a lighter version of that same color. I also have stamped that posted stamp onto this Canson 140 pound cold pressed watercolor paper and I am just painting right on top of that. That way um, I actually had these left over from the previous video that you've seen and so they were in my stash so I just pulled them out and thought well I'll paint these before I die cut them. So after all of that painting and after everything has dried, this is what I have. Nothing fancy. That posted stamp was stamped with shadow gray archival ink, so it's waterproof, but it's kind of light. And I love that it looks like barely there once you paint on it. So. Another tip is to now check your stash for stamps and dies that can be used to tuck or hold your featured die. So I am doing flowers, so I just went through my stash and thought, what could I stick flowers inside of? Or what would I maybe want to use with these flowers? So I pulled out this stamp set. Again, this will be listed and linked for you down in the YouTube description box below. I'm just batching this as well, stamping several of them out adding the sentiments on there and then these tags I can also die cut. Here is an envelope and what's really great about this envelope stamp is that it has a, a cutout die and it actually cuts a slit towards the ins where the inside of the envelope would be where you can tuck flowers as well. Once those were stamped again in that batch sort of mode or process I'm going to go ahead and paint all of these in before I start my die cutting. So you can see that I am prepping all of these things and then I will sit down and do a whole bunch of die cutting. Here's that envelope. I want to just add a touch of shadowing to this so that it looks nice and complete on the card. Very subtle but pretty fun. Now I went ahead and had all big die cutting session and my next tip is to make it easy and inviting to access all of your die cut pieces. So I am using like a appetizer tray. You can get these at Walmart. I've seen them at the dollar store too and I've put all my die cut pieces in there. I also die cut just some simple white backgrounds with some stitching elements just to make sure, give it kind of a complete look and a couple other here. So you can see I've just got a bunch of these. Everything is cut. Everything is ready to go. So now I'm going to start making some of the cards. This is that posted set and I'm just using some sticky notes to mask off along this edge. And then I'm going to use an ink applicator tool with a foam pad and some distress ink starting off of the edge and working my way on in a circular motion and just darkening up mainly towards the corners of this. And I really like how this gives this a nice finished look. And I will remove those post-it notes and you can see you get that nice sort of masked square in, or rectangle in the center. I've added those post-its again and I'm stamping just a little background stamping. This stamp comes with that postage stamp stamp set. It's a really versatile um, set. You can use it for floral cards. I'm looking forward to using it for some Christmas cards. You could, if you saw my previous video, I did some floral stamping right onto that postage stamp stamp. Now I'm going to be adding the die cuts right on top. 
And again, you can see I am just adding again more of those elements that are part of that posted set. And again, I worked in a batch, so I did all of these at the same time, and they're ready to add the next element to. So here is that petals die. I'm just using a um, the handle of my paintbrush to just sort of curl some of those petals. Just gives it a little bit more dimension. You can also use foam adhesive behind some of the petals. This is a little more subtle, but I do find it does hold up some in the mail. And I'm just gluing these together. One thing I really love about this petals die set is it's very simple. There's not like any complicated instructions, uh, not a lot of thinking involved, but it just looks really pretty. And once it's complete, you can layer these up in different ways or use them on their own. But it's not so much to it that it's overwhelming. So I'm just gluing those together. And it's also sized to work very well with this posted, posted stamp, stamp and die cut background. So I've got those together and I'm just going to add them on here. Now one thing I like about working in this way, sort of in batches and have everything setting out, if you just have a little bit of time to create, you can work just a little bit. And once you have all of those die cut elements right there, and presented in a beautiful way, then you can just sit down whenever you have a chance. Maybe it's just a little bit of time in the evenings to make some cards around the weekend. So next tip, use sketches that give your featured stamp and die a home on your cards. So you don't have to reinvent the wheel every time you go to assemble a card. So you've made these sort of postage stamp, stamp ideas, or um, not ideas, but elements, and now you have a place, a way to put them onto your cards. So you can see I just added that onto my card with that rows of stitches die done right in the background. It's a very simple but very unique and very fun to put together. So that is the finished card. And we will do some more like this. Following that same sketch or variations on that same sketch. So another tip is to use different embellishments or slight design changes to keep things from getting boring. So in this case, I had a lot of fun playing around with some different color schemes or like you can see here, very similar, but changed just enough so it didn't feel boring to me like I was creating the exact same card multiple times. But I also didn't feel like every time I sat down to make a card, I had to come up with a totally different idea. So I just layered that onto my background, move that rows of stitching over a little bit to the left just for a different look, keep things interesting, and that card is complete. Here again, you can see that I'm just doing a little bit of a variation, adding a die cut bow, some twine wrapped around there. So here the flowers are in a similar arrangement, but the colors are different. That bow on there is different and it just keeps it fun and keeps it from getting boring. But you'll be surprised if you give this a try. I think how much fun it is and how many cards you can actually complete and make and it's just a very inviting process. So here again, just switching up a slight change or making one element a little bit different. I'm using our watering can die. So I went to my stash and thought, what else now could I stick some of these flowers in? This popped out and then I thought, oh, I'll give that a try. So it's also a way, if you have all of these elements created in advance, you may find you use things from your stash a lot more just playing around, rearranging, because they're already ready to go. I'm just trimming those stems so that they work for me on this card. I love this watering can die because it has that little slit there so you can slide those flowers in. And I'm just using a little bit of tape to hold those in place on the back where you won't see it.
popping in leaves. You can rearrange them in different ways. And now I have a way to add that sentiment. And again, that was already prepped and ready to go and in that sort of appetizer tray. So I could just grab it, play around with where I wanted it to go. I didn't have to get everything back out to create the sentiment. And I used the sketch to add that featured element onto my card. But it is just a little bit different. Now here, playing around with the elements that I already prepared, I'm adding some flowers. I layered up several of those just to give it some extra dimension. The envelope was already ready to go, so I can just put those in and then I'm adding it to my card. This actually ended up being one of my favorite cards that I made today. adding some leaves so I just trimmed those leaves off of the stems so I could add them to these flowers in a little bit different way and I stamped my sentiment and this card was complete as well very clean and simple but I think just very bright happy and fun and really great one with that particular sentiment and again all of these products are listed and linked down in the YouTube description box below if you see something you really love then you can check it out down there Here's another card with that envelope and I layered it with that sort of postage stamp stamp in the back. So here is a look at all of the cards that we made today. If you look at some of the dimension. This one is actually one of my favorites. I sort of like the neutral colors on that one. This one too, I do like this one as well. <laughs> I think that die cut bow really makes that one. Here's that watering can one. So you can see we're mass producing, making lots of cards, but it never gets boring. And you can still have a lot of options as you play. I also feel like you really get to know your die cut. So this petals die that was featured, I can see myself actually going back to use it more because I'm very familiar now with all of the different ways it could be used. One more thing, another tip, is to challenge yourself to use your featured stamp or die in a totally different way. So I had leftover flowers and I thought, how could I use these on a card? And I just layered them in a vertical sort of cascading design on a card base. So just a very sort of modern card. I think really fun, like if you were giving it to um, like a teenager even. And I created this card with the leftover dies that I had. I thank you so much for watching. I hope you've gotten some inspiration for mass producing unique cards. If you enjoyed today's video, please leave us a comment and subscribe and give it a like. And you can also connect with Penny Black on Facebook, Pinterest, Twitter, as well as Instagram, our website, and our blog. And everything's linked for you down in the YouTube description box. Thanks for watching and happy stamping.